fish that creates a bow wave. So they said when the C5 comes up underneath, it lifts the tail of the KCM 35 up like five degrees or something. Like this. So they said the closer you get, the farther you get away from it. They said that you're looking at the river. And they said it feels real. It feels real strange. It's got a, it's got a real floaty. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. Can you, can you imagine just the, the thought of seeing something like that out of your window, you know, 20 feet away from the left field? Like how you can say, look, it's offline, right here, the Gold Skull area, whatever little world wide. You've got to talk about five, they've got all the information you need. Left side fly, I'm going to be heading over there about 20 seconds. You get them sooner, and then you say they're just like super. Yeah, I'm going to be heading over there about 20 seconds. You get them sooner, and then you say they're just like super. He said, the boom just like disappears. He said, we don't even really have to control it. He said, they're, they're so sad. But they just sit there and they get to go ahead. And Thank you, Matt. He said, he said we, we Now, ladies and gentlemen, stand by right as our international <laughs> aerobatic champion, Mr. Matt Chapman, tears up the skies over Seymour Johnson. That Boeing got the contract to build a new Cover the sun with your hand and look high up above. You'll see Matt. He's giving us a great burst of smoke, indicating he's about to enter into the aerobatic portion of his air show. Back to back split S's as he takes the airplane. This is the Cap 580, one of the most advanced aerobatic airplanes in the world, built by the Muntre Aviation Corporation in France. Now, the Matt works his way down from altitude. It's going to be four back to back. During each one of these maneuvers, that's about six positive G's. He pulls that stick back to his belly button and brings the airplane right down to the level. Now he's got a lot of smash, a lot of, a lot of energy. He pulls it into the vertical and gives it five vertical rolls all the way up. And it's this amazing aircraft with its tremendous power to weight ratio that gives Matt the capability of performing the vertical penetration which we just saw. As he comes off, it's going to be a double step roll into a hammerhead. Coming down, looking for a lot of airspeed. That's two of a four point to get him set back up. A three quarters point roll as he reaches the left hand side of the aerobatic airspace. Again, rotating, out goes the stick, snap goes the airplane, and seven G's slam Matt around the cockpit of the airplane as it turns and hangs in the air, and he comes diving right back down through his own trail of smoke. Matt pulls the airplane around again, and it's it up with a four-point slow hesitation roll. Now, once again, he pulls the airplane into the vertical. He's utilizing every bit of the horsepower of the engine as he goes climbing up and above in this beautiful Carolina blue sky. Pulls it back over on his back. He bumps across the top, and he's on the way down. Let's unwind it there. Don't want to get the artificial horizon too tight. As he comes back around the wall, the torque roll. Let's check it out. That's going to turn the airplane into a helicopter. Again, a perfect vertical roll up. Maximum lower rod deflection. The airspeed is bleeding off. The airplane is slowing down. There's no airflow over the controls. The only thing holding the airplane in the sky is the engine, and the torque of that engine continues to rotate the airplane as Matt accelerates in reverse, coming down through his own trail of smoke. That's about 40, 50, 60 miles an hour for you. Whip stalls back out. And here he comes down and that directly at us one more time. Man, I tell you what, it's tough to keep the blue side and the green side separated, but for our aerobatic champion, Matt Chapman, that's no problem, as once again, he pulls the airplane over into a rolling three-quarter loop. Back around. The airspeed meter maxing out as he brings that Montre cap right back to the airspeed center. Now the 45 degree up line. He manipulates the controls and tumbles the airplane. In the dark yeah. He is tumbled. He comes back around and he cartwheels the airplane across the sky. You ever been in an airplane when the guy that comes on and says, ensure the tray tables and seat backs are in full upright position? Well, you better hope it's not Matt Chapman, because he might do that on final! Right there as he takes the airplane and cartwheels it back around. As he comes back toward the air show center, once again, you can hear the airspeed building in the airplane. It is really clicking as he comes down to go for steering altitude. Draws the mice and 
beautiful straight line across the runway and then pulls into the vertical one more time. Up on a slightly modified climbing line there at about 70 degrees. It's slam, bam, as he takes the, the airplane through, pops the stick all the way forward, and the airplane comes tumbling back out one more time for the Raptor. That's reaching the right-hand side of the aromatic airspace, and he's going to pull the airplane back up again. This man is subjecting himself to G-forces, positive, negative, in the, the realm of eight times the pull of gravity, weighing eight times what he normally does here on the ground. You can't even do it. Play on the 45 degree up line into the sun. Here he goes again, slams the stick back forward and tumbles the airplane in over in, in over in. You know, you can learn to be an aeronautical engineer at Emory Riddle Aviation University, and if you did, you would know impossible. You can't make an airplane fly like that. But unfortunately, Matt Chapman never let his airplane read the textbook as he brings it back in from the left hand side of the flight line. Once again, crawling for altitude, pulling the, the cap 580 into the altitude. He's setting up for another maneuver. Smoke is on. They get just a little bit of break of using his body. Thunderbolt engine is going to go up. That starts out right on the deck. Into the burden. Climbing into the sun. Use your hand to cover the sun. Keep that in sight as he pins the airplane against that beautiful blue sky. Slams it into reverse. It literally backs down through his own trail of smoke before once again with stall. I don't think I'm going to be able to take him in so fast. This airplane out. I remember the quote yeah, from yeah, without a doubt. Mr. Carson, Johnny Carson on the Tonight Show. Once went flying with Art Gold, got down on the ground and said, You know, I was in that airplane with Mr. Show, one of my venerable aviators for many years. He said, I've grown up. I don't know which way up was. Now he's coming back around. It's another high G turn. Fighter plane tight turn around. Pulls that stick back and that airplane starts to accelerate down on the line. Again, maximum aileron deflection as the airplane goes up, push forward the stick, pop out a little bit of rudder, and it's a shoulder roll. Or actually, it's tying the neck tie. That utilizing every bit of the altitude to gain the maximum performance from the airplane. Wide sweeping, crop duster type turnaround. Pulls the airplane back on the air shoes. 500 foot center line. And for those who don't know the air line, it's not a pass. Showing you every middle all the way to the on his airplane. That will be over at the every middle. Just play about 20 minutes after he flies. It takes that long to retake his eyeball. Now coming back to the air show center. Over right side up, upside down. Again, a thunderstorm. Takes the airplane to a series of rolls, point rolls, step rolls, four rolls with the skills, very dull one. As he comes back around on the left hand side, he'll be bringing the airplane back around. Where they used to have the show, all the. Absolutely.